Achilles Laria, and we have our own Deirdre Bolton. So Deirdre, it's taken as a given that this deal is done. Right. The president will approve it, and on we go. What do you think? It's taken it as a given, but I mean, we haven't heard a final word from him, right? No. And I think, you know, we go back to December, and at the last minute in December, he changed his mind, and that's how we ended up with the 35-day shutdown. You remember what happened then? A lot of conservatives revolted. Yes. They said, this is horrible. And he did a 180. He changed his mind. Exactly. Now, you know, Mitch McConnell is saying it looks good. Chairman right. Shelby is saying it looks good. So, I mean, there are a lot of voices from the party saying it looks good. But in my mind, no, it is not a done deal. I mean, it, it feels like it's moving in the right direction. But, you know, calling it a barrier instead of a wall, I don't know if that's going to bother the president at the last minute. I don't know if the fact that the Democrats essentially dropped this sort of number and purpose of beds, but yet the number will be 17 percent lower than already exists. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. For me, it's not a done deal. All right. We do know that the president would have to accept, John, $1.37 billion versus the $5.7 billion he requested at the time for 200 miles of wall. This is looking like it might be a third of that if he's lucky. Yeah. But he's still getting something. A quarter. You know, right. he's a, a quarter of the funding, a quarter of the miles right. uh, that he had asked for and that he had demanded. Um, I, you know, one assumes that the president right now is looking at this and saying it's a way out. Uh, right. It is an off ramp. Uh, the, the shutdown was blamed on the president primarily in polls. Uh, he doesn't want to go down that road again. He's busy now with the 2020 election, he wants to focus on that. But and he's got enough of a kind of a fig leaf here that he can say, look, I'm going to view it as a down payment. It's a start. Right. And we're going to get we're going to we're going to get more. But I would imagine that we haven't heard from the president yet, as Deidre pointed out. He's the one who did change his mind the last time, might change his mind again this time, assumed that assuming that he had been uh, consulted on this all, all along. He may be waiting to hear what the reaction to this is uh, on conservative talk radio from his base before he reacts to it. Uh, but one assumes one of them, Sean Hannity, not a fan. I haven't heard from Rush Limbaugh, but already you're getting, you know, some some early indications from that group, not not fans. Yeah, but if he if he spins this the right way politically, the Democrats can claim claim victory. He can claim victory, and they just move on. Right. Um, again, I, you know, it's interesting when you look at the market. The market moved up very smartly throughout the shutdown. Um, the market is moving up on this, potentially avoiding another shutdown. What is the market telling us? You know, at the end of the day, certainty is the market's friend. Like we're seeing today, right. whenever we saw the agreement in place, we said to ourselves, okay, you know, we're going to take baby steps to get in. But I know uh, talk, talking for my clients and saying we want to see more the devil's in the details when it comes to this agreement. The president, the ink is not dry on this. The president hasn't signed off on anything. So there is there a little uncertainty there? Sure. Right. But at the same time, we're going to position our clients for growth and for uh, greatness, no matter the case, either way it goes. You know, you keep hearing that the, the backdrop, the market's like, it's still the same. Very good earnings. They might be tested the quarter we're in, but they've been pleasantly surprised on the upside. Will they continue to be? I think so. And then, of course, we can't forget this week is a huge week for our understanding with what's going on with China. So I think there is a little bit of optimism that some kind of framework. I mean, we've heard from lots of um, parties that, OK, there's not going to be an extension of that March 1st deadline. But in the meantime, the two sides are speaking. So between, you know, fingers crossed, shutdown being averted and perhaps a framework being worked out with China, even if it's just an agreement to keep talking and, and just something that makes sense. We do see the optimism today. All right. Uh, yesterday, I had a chance to speak with Steny Hoyer, the House Majority Leader, who seemed to draw even more distance with Nancy Pelosi on a host of issues, including the prospect of a shutdown. Take a look at this. We didn't want wall money. We think that you, you need personnel, you need infrastructure, you need uh, uh, you need technology. Uh, we were just at the border. Right. Uh, clearly, those are all uh, necessary. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, the president wants a wall. Okay, uh, I've always said that that's probably going to be part of the uh, uh, agreement. All right, and so it is. Now, earlier in the interview, he was saying that this sudden issue the Democrats raised about the number of detention beds that Deirdre was talking about, lowering it to 16,500 when they've routinely been north of 48,000 beds, they've agreed on a figure around 42,000, but no one sticks to those figures. But that got the monkey off the president's back as far as finding a reason to reject this. Um, 
or not. We don't know. But, John, I mean, that issue was raised at the last minute, but gives you an indication of the power of the left in the party that wanted to make it an issue, that wanted to make eventually even defunding ICE an issue. So this battle goes on within the party. This battle goes on, and at the end of the day, it was kind of understood We'll, we'll raise the number of beds by a smaller amount than, than, than uh, DHS wanted. But we also kind of know, as politicians in the funding game, that DHS can move money around. Right. And if it needed to, it's going to put more beds in. At the end of the day, though, we do not have a broad consensus and agreement on how to address the immigration issue right. in all of its complexity between Democrats and Republicans. We have a tiny little stopgap measure that keeps the government open past Saturday. Uh, we also don't, do not have the big, broad China agreement. And my suspicion is that you're going to see lots of fig leaves when this, when this China deal comes through. The, uh, the, the sense I'm getting from people who watch China when I talk to them about people who have been USTRs in the past or uh, in the USTR's office or just uh, people who are expert on China. You're that, talking to the trade representatives. Yeah, the trade representatives in D.C. That, that China is not going to budge to the degree that the United States wants on this. It's going to be very interesting to watch how the, uh, the market metabolizes right. that. You know, that, that was what I was curious about, Achilles, is this. What would make and how would the market react? to a deal that doesn't address some of the substantive issues to which John just touched, um, intellectual property, some of these other more thorny issues that are a little bit more time consuming. But they, they make a promise to address that. They buy more soybeans, buy more goods, commit to buying more U.S. cars. But that's it. It's like a fig leaf, but it's better than what we had. How would the markets respond to that? Well, you just said it. I, we're talking about certainty in the market. We have to make sure, no matter what happens with this deal, that certain parties are winning. My lawyer used to tell me a long time ago, the best part of any negotiation is the fact that two, either party feels like they've walked away with something. Uh, for my clients personally, who are Latinos, so they say, you know what, we're not 100% on this wall. We're not in favor of it, but at the same time, we need more information. We need to know if it's, is it in our best interest. And either way, we're going to make sure that we're ready either side of the fence. But would the ready. markets accept, you know, kind of a, a weak deal? In other words, some commitments, some promises, but not. They may not have a choice, Neil. At the same time, you're, accept that. You, you know, you need to have, you can't have the uncertainty that we had with the shutdown right. and where all sectors were being affected and possibly sending the market into a, a, a slower economic slowdown. So the market slowdown. just wants this uncertainty uh, put, put aside, that, that some deal is better than no deal even if it's not a great deal. Sometimes the market doesn't care, yeah. and it's going to do it whatever it decides to do. The thing is, you have to be ready on either way to position yourself for that greatness. Deidre, the president is saying right now in this cabinet meeting that he can't say he's very happy about the immigration deal. He says he will have a meeting on the immigration deal later on. Didn't tip his hand where he would go with this. We might find out in the proverbial pool spray. But he's not necessarily saying yay or nay at this point. Right. And, and I mean, in some ways, I sort of felt for him last night, right? He shows up in Texas and he essentially got scooped by his own party. Now, obviously, he's representing that party, right. but the news broke and he kind of gets on stage for this big moment and he doesn't even have the details, right? Which he made very clear to the crowd. Um, Listen, I think anybody who is a federal employee who works for one of those nine departments who has already dealt with a 35-day shutdown um, would very much like to, to avert this. But, I mean, it has to go to vote, right, pretty shortly, in other words, to, to avoid this Friday shutdown. I mean, yeah, the, the clock is ticking. It it's pretty yeah. quick, right? Yeah. And, we, I mean, we did hear Mitch McConnell say, yes, we will take this to the Senate in short order. But, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll listen to the president. We'll listen to the president. Balls in his out. court. Uh, and cameras are in the cabinet room right now, so we might get an idea uh, exactly what the president will do. He has very little time to do it. Some have said that he has to decide on something by tonight if they're ever, ever to make the deadline to get this done by Friday. We shall see. Dow 327 points. We'll have more.